Hello. It was recently announced that Godot 4 will discontinue Visual Script support. This leaves one less language for users to choose when programming in Godot Engine. But in the coming beta, .NET 6 support will also be available. This gives users two first-class languages to pick from. In this video, I will be covering how to write professional GD script. I will be sharing principles that I keep in mind when writing code that I'm sure will help you become a more efficient programmer. The first tip has to deal with exploring code and knowing the documentation. When it comes to exploring code in the project, you can see here in my project, if I want to go to a functions declaration, I can click on it like this. In order for that to work, I press the command key on my Mac in order to highlight the functions or classes. On Windows, you can press the command key as well. While holding the key and hovering over the function or class, you can click on it and it'll take you directly to the documentation. Another useful thing to know is, if you have the scene tree open and click on a node, if you look at the inspector on the right hand side, there's a small button here that says doc. Clicking on that will open up the internal documentation in Godot. Another option for searching documentation is to click the search help button at the top right of the editor. Here you could type in a class that you want more information on. The last option is to click on the online docs. This takes you straight to your web browser where you can browse documentation. I find myself here often and I think it's important to know how to browse this efficiently. If you're using Godot 4.0, you'll want to make sure you're browsing the latest documentation. Now, I think one of the most important sections here is the tutorial sections. You could come here and find many tutorials for most of the built-in functions in Godot. I won't be focusing on that area for now, but instead, point you to the class reference. At the bottom, click on the Godot API class reference. Here you can find a list of all the classes available in Godot. For me, I try to keep up to date on GDScript and the global scope. Click into each of these, and I recommend reviewing and learning as much as you can. These have many useful and generic classes and functions to help you do everyday tasks in a game. One of the reasons I find it important to know this information is that you won't end up rewriting code that already exists inside the game engine itself. For example, computing angles and distances is a common routine in games and already have helpful functions for helping you do those things. Besides those two namespaces, I find it important to know some of the functions in the vector classes, particularly a vector class, which is a space that you work in. If you primarily work with 2D, you could start with the vector2 class. And for 3D space, you'll want to learn as much as the vector3 class as you can. The next three tips come directly from the scripting tutorial section. First, I'll start with static typing in GDScript. To use static types, you put a colon after a variable name. After that colon, you can put a type that you want Godot to be using. Or you can leave the area blank in order to let Godot figure out for you. In the tutorial, there's an example of some logic that I use myself in my game. I'll typically cast an object to a certain type that I want and have some guard clause to prevent executing code further. Once we move beyond that point, we know the player object is safe to use and call this damage function on. The main goal of static typing is to create safe lines. In the editor, you'll see safe lines denoted with a green color. A script with more safe lines should improve your confidence that the code will work the way you intend it. I also recommend going to editor and changing your editor settings. Click on the general tab in text editor you should click the completion and add type hints. Make sure that's enabled. Once enabled, when you type new functions that Godot knows about, you'll see it lists the type information here. Once you autocomplete, you'll see it adds type information. This is extremely useful because it forces you to use types. And if you're already using types, you don't have to add them yourself manually. My third tip is to stick to a certain style when writing your code. There's an entire document here devoted to styling. Choosing a style does not only affect the format of your code, 
but the order you list your variables or methods. This document even suggests an order for you to put your code in. It has some good rules of thumb and even more suggestions on how to do static typing. Another feature I find useful is the warning system. Warnings are meant to point out possible issues in your code. In the following code, you can see there's one warning down below. I could click on that warning to see what it's all about. If I want, I could choose to ignore the warning. Godot adds a decorator here in order to ignore the warning. Usually I try not to ignore warnings. I try to figure out exactly what Godot is telling me is wrong with the code. In this case, I return too early, so I just delete the return statement and the warning goes away. For more warnings, go to Project and Project Settings. Make sure Advanced Settings are enabled. You want to come to the Debug section and choose GDScript. Here you can see all the warnings. I tend to enable all the warnings. If you want, you can even treat warnings as errors, meaning your game won't run until you address the warning. The last thing I use to write professional code is a recent enhancement to Godot 4. While all the other tips could be applied to Godot 3, this is the one tip that can only be used in Godot 4. Documenting code usually involves comments. In this case though, Godot will treat comments with two hashtag symbols in a special way. Here I have comments using the new style. Putting two hashtag symbols will treat comments as documentation. This means when I click search help and look at one of my classes, you can see the extra documentation that came from those comments. Your documentation can be very rich, including links to classes, other methods, or even signals. That's all I have to say about writing professional GD script. I hope you're able to learn something from this video. Thanks for watching.